Hey, welcome back to Jameson's Repair Shop. Well, we got another little project on the go on this uh, 65 Thunderbird hardtop. Uh, I'm going to put the uh, shift tube bushing in. So that goes right in here. And uh, I think uh, Nova Nogo suggested I do that, and I believe that I should because there's absolutely no bushing left in there. So if you uh, watch Nick at Vintage Thunderbird Repair, he does it on the bench. He puts one in, so I'll be following some of his instructions. He also mentioned about doing it in the car by taking the hinge off, uh, this side, driver's side hinge. But I think by taking out, I had this off anyway, because I had to put a brake line on to the back of the car. So I put a new brake line on. And that's the first time, just a note, that's the first time this inner fender has ever been out, because it had the original uh sealer and everything's still on it but uh, i think i can get at it from here quite easily so if anybody wants to know what a an original fuel line setup looks like well that's what it is right there that's never been off this car and nor has this part of the brake line only i just t uh, tied back into down there so this is all original fuel line so I know some of this stuff gets torn up and you kind of don't know where it all goes. And then it all, the cover that goes over top of that. So anyway, let's get on this. Um, I understand uh, through Nick's video that there's a, you have to take the, there's a bolt under the column. And then there's also a tab that, that uh, activates the uh, neutral safety switch, I believe it is. Anyway, there's two bolts in the column that have to come out. So let's get at her. All right, so got one, and I had to put this, uh, well, it's showing neutral on my, uh, up on the uh, shift indicator. That might not be exactly, but it's a 3 8 head socket that I'm using, so right up in there, it, it aligns in that position, so we'll take it out, try not to lose it. Oh. All right, let me get this out, and then I'll, uh, anyway, I'll get it out of there. I got the 3 8 one out from up under the, the column. That's for the shift tube, holds it at the top. So I'll set that aside. And now up under the dash for that uh, tab, I'll see if I can get it up in here and show you. Right here. Uh, where are we? There it is. Right here. Of course, the work light and everything is all in the wrong spot. It always is. There it is. All right, where, where are we at? Right there. Anyway, there now I got the socket on it. There we go. So, so that's a 5 16th. And that should allow that tube to slide forward. Once that's all out, we'll see. It'll probably take a little finessing. All right, let me play with it, see what's going on. All right, the bushing's in, and uh, the film crew and the script writer failed to show the bushing and cutting the bushing. <laughs> they went the they went right into putting it in, putting it in the car. So it's in, and the next part of the video clip you'll see where I actually put it in, and I couldn't video putting it in. Uh, there's just no room to do it all at once. But uh, I describe in the next section how I did it. But anyway, I'll put a picture here with a picture of a split bushing, one that's been cut. And I'll put in a description of a PDF, where to get a PDF on how to do it. I found it online. I don't know whose it is. Uh, there's no name on it. But I'll put the link to it in the description. So anyway, let's continue on uh, with this video. All right. There it is, it's in, the seal, I know you can't see it. I couldn't really, it's in there though. Uh, I couldn't really video it because there's just no room. But you can do it from here. Um, when you take the 
shift hub off, not out, or bolt out of the bottom of the shift hub and take that tab off, um, you may find that the shift tube is sticking up in there a bit, so I had to give it a little pry forward and it popped down. So now I gotta pop it back up. And you'll not get it on without doing that because there's these little uh, tabs, I don't know if you can see them or not, these little tabs here that they'll push in there and they'll hold that seal in place. Or that bushing rather. So anyway, I'm gonna uh, push that tube back up in place, try to get reassembled. And uh, that job, I would say, is not simple. It takes a lot of patience, and if you don't have patience, a lot of cursing and swearing. My patients were able to overcome the cursing and swearing. Um, but it will go in. Uh, I end up having, I'm gonna show you, uh, starting it on the back side, on the back and going around, and then I had this pry bar, and I was able to kind of grab it, well, you see that, grab it right there with the pry bar, and hold it. It actually wedged in there between the rag joint when the seal was there, and then I, with the screwdriver, I was able to continue slipping it around, because what happens is there's a lip on the seal, that wants to go on, the out, keep going on the outside of the lip of this, of the shift tube. So that's a bit of a problem because once you, it'll, it'll lock itself over and you go back and kind of jam it in and get it over. But, and you don't want to damage it. But that's it, it's in. So let me get it back in place and we'll see if it made any difference in the, the shifter, the sloppiness. Well, it's going to because this, this tube was missing it all together, the bushing was gone all together. So the, when you shifted, the, the shift mechanism just kept flopping up and down. So there's, it's gonna make it better for sure. Now that I have the uh, shift tube bushing in, in the lower part of the uh, shift tube, let's see how this, uh, if it made any difference in this. So I drag the wheel over. And before, let's start her up, see how she starts. No wheels on it, so the steering wheel wants to creep a bit. So there she is running. Let's see if this is on. All right, so the Prindle light's on. I replaced the bulb and the Prindle. Uh, not Pringle, Prindle. How many times I've videoed this and called it a Pringle? Uh, anyway, you get stuff stuck in your head and you can't get rid of it. Anyway, so right now I've seen a significant difference in now remember, there's no wheels on this, so you'll hear some clunking because they're just sitting on the brake drums. So the part, the brake on, so I put it in reverse. And uh, it's pretty close. The linkage needs to be adjusted a slight bit because I still have to push up a little on reverse. And then neutral, she goes in neutral. And then now, I want to mention, this car has a uh, C6 transmission in it. It's been swapped out from a cruise o to a C6. So I haven't driven this car like on the road to know how it's shifting and stuff. So that's something I'll be discovering probably today actually. So, but we'll put her in gear. And she's in drive there now. Now this is the actual cruise o drive. So I don't know if that's what it's set up to do with the C6 or if it's up there. But I won't know until I get cruising. But the difference I see in this, since I put the shift tube in, on the Prindle, when I pull it down into low, the, the indicator needle used to come out to here. And now I can only go to there, it only goes to low. Just a little, just a, there, yeah, it goes out a little bit past, but it used to go way out. Like you used to see it stick way out here. So there is some adjustments that need to be done on the, uh, on the, the linkage. So, we'll see. But that's it. Uh, I can't change any more with the shift tube. All I can do is work with the linkage now. So that's what I'll be doing. Fiddling with the linkage a bit to get it right. But uh, that's my version of putting in a uh, shift tube bushing through the uh, wheel house opening. And uh, you can do whatever way you want to do, but that's how I did it. Seems to work okay. Let's give her a little shot of fuel here, see how she sounds. Well, there you go. Oh, I'll show you too while I'm here. 
these turn signals. I think they look pretty good. I won't forget them on, that's for sure. Anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.